Crikey! Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art for fun. It's such an exciting day because we're going to be doing some fan art. Uh, if you know, this is a tribute to Secret Tiny Whispers, my new super obsession online. And I'm really excited to bring it to you. I'm going to be explaining to you how you can create this gorgeous, surreal scene of the keyhole from the opening credits yourself at home step by step. Whether you watch along with us on the show or you've just decided you really like this image, either way is okay. Remember to check the description below for the materials and the links because we have a step-by-step -step mini book that is written out with all of the techniques and materials explained to you. We have a traceable. There's a lot of no draw, a lot of you don't have to draw <laughs> friendly options for beginners. I'm going to explain every technique, every color mix. I've got some really cool, fun sponging techniques that I'm going to show you for the background. To help me do all this craziness is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. He's going to zoom in with cameras. He's going to ask me questions, you know, uh, to remind me about materials and stuff. So that way you guys at home can have the best paint at home uh, experience that you can. Now, remember to stay to the end so that you can tell us which one from the series you want to do next. We will try to tell you if there's spoilers so that you can mute and then fast forward if you're watching the show. If you're not, check the description below for more information. I don't see what else to do, but get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to paint this. So let's start out by looking at the materials we have in today's fun lesson. I've got a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. And as per like what we do, we have our wishes and intentions on our canvas. The first is kind of like a frivolous one, which is like next year, the, the cast of Secret Tiny Whispers actually gets nominated for an Emmy, especially Joel Edgerton. Egerton? Edgerton, I don't know. There's two of them with like the same name. They're both Australians. The more Australian guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. John doesn't know what I mean. He always falls asleep during the TV show. So anyways, but the, the whole cast really gets recognized because they've done a lot of great stuff. Um, we also got a wish in from a community member that Bunny finds her lost dog, Duke, and just generally that all lost pets come home safely. So we're definitely putting that out into the world. The acrylic paint we're going to be using today is Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, Thalo Blue, Titanium White, and phthalo green i've got cups of water out also you're going to want to have some sponges and things aside because i'm going to show you a really cool fun hack for creating this rust effect on the key lock are you up for today okay in step one we're going to do what we call blocking in which is a very simple way of defining space on our surface so I'm going to use, this is like a watercolor pencil, which just means it can erase. You could use kids chalk um, that you use on chalkboard, but I just kind of want to get some of this worked in. And then later is when we're going to pull out our traceable and put our figure in. But right now, this part we can really probably do freehand. So the top part of our keyhole is going to be a circle. So you're going to kind of make a little circle here. Mm -hmm. And you want to leave room on either side. So sometimes I like to put my hands kind of like to make a little break mm -hmm. to give myself enough room. And the keyhole is going to come in, tuck it in a little bit round. Remember, your keyhole is artisanal. Yeah, this is like that creepy court door keyhole well, in the intro. Yeah, that's, that's where I took the inspiration from was the intro where there's a door and another door and a secret tiny door. And we go through and it's all, um, you know what it reminded me of is Carnival. Huh. Remember the intro from Carnival? Oh, yeah. I that did, everybody has, the, like, since copied. The, yeah. the creepy blood and stuff is not so. So I'm going to come down here about four fingers up and make a little straight line. I don't want to come all the way to the ends. You want this to be about to here. You don't need a locksmith out, right? <laughs> and so we're going to bring that line down. It's kind of fun to draw a keyhole. And because, again, this is an old rusted keyhole. It's pretty easy to do. Yeah, it's one that you can kind of get. And the great thing about these watercolor pencils, besides doing great wishes and things, is that it lets you really think it out. But again, yeah. if all you can get is like that colored creel as kids chalk that you have around the house, what about use that. What if you just had a pencil, a number two I, pencil? I think on this one it'll be okay because we're starting the background with black and then Probably rebuilding. So you won't okay. get so much structural induced discoloration. So... 
you know, kind of check your lines just a smidge. We're not going to use our traceable yet. We want to put her in later. But I do want to take it and make sure that I'm happy with the positioning of her and that she's fitting in the space well. So you kind of, and she does. She fits that's in the, really that's the, well. Her. That's the, the mom. This is Lise. Right. Yeah, this is Lise. So Jack kind of sleeps through my shows. <laughs> I don't, I get but to see the first part of them. Well, in this one, he got into a little bit more because um, well, this, of his camera group. So yeah. He got into that because I guess they have a really good steady cam dude on it or something. Yeah. So the the same group that did the uh, shot from Fabulous Miss Maisel, you know, the beautiful Marvelous shot on Miss base. Maisel. Yeah, the, that one. But the same steady cram group did yeah. that shot here. So. So he's pretty excited about it. He kind of follows some of it just to catch the photography and then he crashes out. <laughs> So when we have that all in, we're going to paint the outside black and the inside blue. Pretty simple. Okay. Now, my two cents is use a brush big enough to not make yourself work too hard. So I'm going to use this sort of like little one inch brush. And the, and the good news is we can be really kind of messy with this first layer. So I'm going to load it up. Notice I'm flipping the brush over. I'm not getting the paint everywhere. And we're going to just really messy paint this in. Because you're just making that bronze lock thing. Yeah. And, and because it's, it's going to be so handcrafted. <laughs> it's artisanal door. <laughs> well, it's, it's also that dreamy door. Like well, it's door. very surreal, right? It kind of captures that. I was, I'm really into this. There's a couple things. The painting in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with. But I can't figure out the artist that did it to get permission that's that's Lisa's bedroom, right? Yeah, well, Packer and Lisa's. They're like, okay. they're still, for however long you're still together. No spoilers. <laughs> for however long you're still together. I don't know how they're hanging in. It's they're not as, I mean, like, I like Vision and Wanda as a couple better. Really? Oh, I yeah. mean, I love Vision and Wanda. Like, you know me. I love me some Wanda. Um, she's like, she's my girl. But there were just like these twists and turns and mysteries that I really got into here. I haven't had a good mystery since Murder Brown. Yeah. Father Brown. <laughs> Father Brown, we call him Murder Brown. So you're going to just freeze. Don't live near that, that priest. Don't live near that priest, yeah. <laughs> Some of the kids, people are not getting the message <laughs> from the sermon on Sunday. They keep murdering each other. So you're just blocking just, in the key. This is, yeah, just blocking in. And notice it's like messy. And this it's, is the underpainting, too. This is called an underpainting, and an underpainting is kind of like this really rough suggestion. Um, it's kind of hard when you're new to painting to, like, feel okay about your underpainting. I mean, don't go across your keyhole or anything, but this is just about catching this first bit in and getting enough of a dark value here so that when you do the sponging method to create the rust... It has uh, something to sort of anchor from. And we'll get in a sharper brush or whatever um, later to capture this. No. So I don't want the black getting into my blue too much. So I'm going to dry it. If, okay. And uh, John's going to talk to you a little bit while we dry it. Or I guess we're going to edit. Yeah. <laughs> Once your black is dry, because you don't want to get that all into your blue sky, right? Because that would completely move the whole feeling of the piece. Um, we're going to come in and kind of paint in the interior space, the surreal space. I've got a nice big bright here. This is a 24 texture by Raphael, but it doesn't really matter what brush you have. You just want one that is square shaped and for acrylic paint. And I'm going to go ahead and take my titanium white and my phthalo blue together, and I'm going to make a kind of blue sky color. See, just perfect day. This is also an underpainting, though. So you don't have to be neat yet, though I am going to use the edge of the brush here to kind of start to crisp this around. The beginnings. It's the beginning. And this is going to let me kind of like see, because remember, we can easily come back with more black paint and paint out the blue sky. So we have a lot of leeway here. That's why this is that underpainting thing. That's why this is the underpainting. It's kind of like underwear, but for art. Or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> the painting feels insulted now. So I'm going to pull this in. 
The, the big thing is we want to create that sort of intense blue sky feeling. Um, it reminded me a little bit of Pushing Daisies. Mm, oh, yeah. Uh, in its little well, once feel. Once you got the, the creepy doors. <laughs> like you mean there's a door was... where there's another door? <laughs> <laughs> but the first door, it, well, it felt a little mystery science theater 3000 to me. It did? Know, with, well, door, door, door. door. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, with, but, you know. That's a weird... Like, I wouldn't have expected that because I, I like, again, I think I went more to uh, the village, maybe, or uh, kind of like the village meets Dawson's Creek. Uh, yeah, meets I can see this it. is us kind of a thing. I, I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things. It's maybe its own genre. We're going to come on the edge here with our blue and white, and we're just going to paint in this whole keyhole. Yep. Yeah, this is art, man. Now, can you? You're mixing the white and the blue on your brush there. It doesn't have to be blended together? Not perfectly at this stage. Not at all, because we're just trying to get that first coat of paint on. This is going to let us get, you know, our traceable on later. It's going to help us um, get some depth to our sky. And also check that we're happy with our keyhole. Because key I know somebody's going to be like, I don't love my keyhole. <laughs> but who's to say, right? Like your keyhole is your keyhole. You've got to love your keyhole. I think that looks like it. That looks like that. I'm just making sure this has got some nice coverage. And you can see like the brush's edge really helps oh, yeah. me capture the line there. Now I'm going to be doing a little, we're, we're going to be doing, you and me, we're going to be doing a little bit of shading here, but I'm going to walk you through it so it's not like too much. Guess what, John? What's that? This is step one. Okay. Da, 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 da. We did step one. So now that you have your keyhole in, the first thing that I need you to do is just sort of relax and realize that your keyhole is keyhole. <laughs> <laughs> that your keyhole is valid, and uh, everything is okay because really we're going to be doing so many layers that you have a lot of chances to sort of refine and define this. Let me show you the fun sponging technique. You're going to love it. They're going to love it. You're going right. to love it. <laughs> okay so this is a craft sponge and this is a bag of sea sponges and both of these are excellent for creating rough uh rust texture i'm going to open badly this bag um now the harvesting of sea sponges like way a while ago we looked it up and apparently it's not that bad i would say probably the plastic bag the sponges is in is worse than the yeah. Then the harvesting of sponges because they're a plant. So this is like a trimming thing. You want uh, you would want something rough like this, but you can get away with this. And we're going to use these to create this really cool texture. So the first thing you want to do is get your sponge wet. And I use, and I'll show you, I use a bowl. And that's also so I can keep my sponges from drying out. And let's start with just a little bit of even brown and maybe a loose mix of the black. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty chill. And you're going to just dab your sponge up and down along this edge here. You don't have to be perfect because, again, we're going to be making that shadow. Oh, so if you over, over just sponge. So, like, don't go, don't go crazy in your sky. Then your keyhole might be a little artisanal and, you know, you need to think about your enthusiasm a bit. But this is art. Like, who's to say? Right? Who's to say if you're right or wrong? I'm always telling uh, my students that, you know, it is their painting, right? Their world, their space. Now, this is a good faux technique you could use on your walls or anything. <laughs> yeah. This is very, don't like tell Martha, but this is a very Martha Stewart thing. <laughs> Not that I got it from Martha. Martha didn't invent faux painting. Though you might think she kind of, she kind of like acts like it. But she I'm, may be, she may have like a 10th degree black belt in it. I don't know, like. She's like, I don't really want to mess with Martha. Like, I have a feeling it could go like really pear shaped fast. She's done hard time. Well, yeah, she did. That was really weird, wasn't it? <laughs> Not who you would think would go to jail, especially like given recent stuff. You're like, Martha went to jail. <laughs> Martha, sure. I suppose it was a very creative time in prison. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean when you want to interview people who were in jail with that's like a whole segment somebody should have done like 
interviewing people that were in jail with Martha to see what she was like because she did the full run, didn't she? I don't know. Actually, I think she did the full time. We're just tapping up and down, and you can see that just gives us a little texture. And it's just the brown and black. I haven't even gotten into my sea sponge. I haven't even gotten fancy, fancy yet. What no. I'm trying to do is break up patterns because patinas, which is the fancy way of saying this stuff rusted, um, you know, tend to be a little irregular. If you need to change the position of your canvas, shake your easel around a lot. <laughs> you need to change the position of your canvas. Do that. Don't change your body. Don't right. um, put your body in a bad physical position because you can get injured. And if you're concerned about your manicure, uh, acrylic paint comes off with rubbing alcohol. Hmm. So not a stress. What you're putting out there. Though I do find, and also acetone, I do find gel nails hold up better. I'm putting what? out some more brown paint. Brown paint. Brown paint. Just some brown paint. Some brown, oh no, brown cow kind of paint here. So. Just layer one. Ready player, layer one. How, you're going to. Just dabbing up and down. It's the fun part. But you're not dab, painting dab, dab. around the corner of the, the surface, around the edge. No, I don't have to worry too much about this because, again, we're going to be doing an interior. We're going to round the edge. No, I mean so it the looks outside. very 3D. You're not painting around the outside of the canvas. I am not. Um, traditionally, I like to, the thin structures like this, I like to put into a frame. That's not like a right or wrong thing. That's just a choice that you can make. Try not to get too caught up in the right or wrong things in art. But you can frame or not frame. If you're not going to frame, go ahead and paint around the edges. If you are going to frame, you just want to paint around the edge enough that the white canvas doesn't peek through the frame. Dude, the, what's with the frame on that, that one in Lisa's bedroom? Oh, on the painting I'm obsessed with? Yes. That's like, yeah. the, it's almost as crazy the frame that we got, the, <laughs> the French painting. Oh, I know. That one is super carved. That molding was so expensive on that French painting my mom got. I don't know. I don't recognize the molding um, on the painting in Lisa's bedroom. And I actually did some looking up to see if I could figure out who did it, who was like behind it. Yeah. Couldn't find anything. I think maybe the Victorian Frame Company. Looks a little bit like one of their moldings to me. But here's what. Like, I'll call around and see if I can find some people who have some inside skinny on who framed that. Use my little insider uh, art track here. So you're just. I got my contacts over at Clubhouse, right? <laughs> now that was crazy. Was that? Yeah. When, the, like, I, I did not expect them to do the impromptu cast thing on on there so what is i've been clubhouse? super tripped out by clubhouse like what it is and what it isn't at the moment and i'm just gonna like you know i tend to follow cast members like i followed everybody over from blackish yeah like but like in a in a like not scare the parents kind of way like, it's like <laughs> their kids and you want to be you want to be like encouraging like you're so talented and be amazing and succeed but not like I'm stucking you in a terrifying way that makes your parents worried. So I mean, like social media has changed, like all the definition of boundaries. <sighs> Tell you Facebook has for sure. What are they doing lately? I mean, for real. That is just crazy. That algorithm. I don't know what it's on about, but it's been like put on steroids recently. Like, so you're just layering more. I am the... just mixing cad yellow and cad red into the brown here. And you're just sort of swirling it around. Look at that. I'm just swirling it around and tapping it up. And the more yellow you add, the lighter it gets. All right. You see, it's like, let's step back and kind of take a look for a second. Sometimes it's good to take a step back from your painting and take it in. You got to You got to You got to step now, back and you're kind of looking for patterns, aren't you? You're looking for patterns like you're a detective. Huh. What's, the de <laughs> what's the detective's name in this? Uh, I think, well, it's, it's uh, a Annabelle. An it's Annabelle, right? I think it's Annabelle. Uh -huh. And um, man, it was a flashback episode, which I do not love. That is not my favorite. And, you know, my grandmother being the basis of Nancy Drew, uh, which is like a fun fact. You can go look at my Pinterest page to see that. Because she was like the Wichita Wonder, and she used to solve crimes with like the police and uh, the magician Abbott. 
like investigated her and my mom even got to meet uh it was either Penn or teller the quiet one which is the quiet one whatever the quiet one is my mom got to meet him up in vegas because they were researching my grandmother hmm. to see if she was like real and they wanted to know what my mom thought oh yeah that book that <laughs> yeah they wrote that whole book she had two chapters so anyways the girls uh lease i guess had a detective agency when she was a kid and they like would find people's missing pets or something. I didn't like the episode. It was not my favorite. I don't like time loop episodes and I don't like three days ago episodes. <laughs> like I don't like when we're in an ex- upsetting scene and then we're like, I'm three days ago. Keep tapping up and down. Keep tapping up and down. And Notice that some of these are more orange. Some of these are more yellow. My pressure. Another thing is oh, my pressure. If I went hot, hard like that, can you guys see that? If I press in really hard, makes a. I don't get a good, nice effect. My pressure has to be kind of light. And it's okay to have blotches because, you know, yeah, that cause, door cause was very Because that's what rust blotchy. do. Yeah, that was a very It's looking pretty. Door. It's starting to look pretty rusty. Like, I think we're making some headway here. And I'll get some more yellow into the brown and. The door and behind come up the here. door. <laughs> Stop mocking the intro, dude. <laughs> You always mock my shows. Well, that's about all I get of it. It's true. You, pr- you crash out pretty fast. <laughs> Though the other night, you caught up and yelled, Crikey! <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That cracked me up. Keep tapping different values of orange and red around the canvas. Well, Just tapping I, it up and down. I mean, like... About like the tenth time this guy walks out, and you know he does a really pretty good job of not talking with an Australian accent, and until until the crikey, and then it just <laughs> it's like, John really zeroed in on that. <laughs> it's been uh, his new thing. He's annoying the kids with it so much. Like they need it. So I'm just doing little different textures. Now stand back and take like a look at that, you know. Um, and I think that we've got to do one lighter layer to really bring the rust in. Okay. So how to do that is I'm going to bring some of my white and black in to this little orange mix. And kind of tap that around as well. See that? Mm-hmm. And I haven't even gotten into my sea sponge. I didn't even have to mention it. Why did I mention it? I don't know. I don't know. You don't need it. <laughs> Just use the cheap cellulose sponge. Actually, that does a really good job. It does. You could use a kitchen sponge. You could use a speed sponge. I like to kind of come around the edges here. And I may later, like, even come on the edges here. Like, you can pinch the sponge and kind of come on the inside a bit to create some dimensionality. It's our fun art way of saying stuff looks 3D. Right? We got it. You got it. So can you kind of see that patina there? Yeah. We want to do that everywhere. (laughs) This is a good workout, sort of. It's still very embarrassing to have to go to your doctor and be like, I have a painting stress injury, but. (laughs) You have a sports injury from painting. They do actually. He does look at it like a sports injury. I'm grabbing a little bit more yellow and red. Now, this is a really cool, this is like, this is lease. Yeah, this is lease in in the scene through the keyhole at the intro. And she's the mom. She's the mom of the twins. What's her, what's the, what's what's her her husband's name? Uh, Packer. Packer. Yeah. That's right. It's played by Joel Edgerton. And he's like, he, you know, man, I don't want to do any spoilers because I know some people are starting to catch. It's finally catching on. Well, that, where did you find the network? Because (laughs) that's like, how did you even find this? So basically I came to the end of Netflix and I'm not even kidding. Like I got, I like finished my last like Korean comedy and it says you have now completed Netflix. You need to find something else to watch. It was like the end of the internet. I didn't know it existed. Like you could watch (laughs) all of it. I did. I watched everything. And so I had to find something else. And I guess um, on those little streaming TVs, they have uh, apps Mm. or they they call them apps. Yeah. You were using the little box thing. We got off. Yeah, That's why I had to get the card. I was signing up. 
So it's like five dollars a month, which wasn't too bad. It's um, uh, it's called uh, Butternut, which is yeah. It okay. has some really good shows, and you know what I heard? Hmm. I told my daughter this, and she's so excited because this is trending on TikTok right now. So big, they're gonna bring back Clone High. Oh. So she was so excited, and I totally told her that Butternut was like gonna buy Clone High, and so she went on TikTok huh. and just went crazy. Huh. Um, so that's a big one. And she's, she likes to do the, I'm John F. Kennedy. <laughs> she likes to do that voice all the time. Thank goodness she didn't get into sea shanties. <laughs> <laughs> I am relieved. We did get a little into the Tiger King on TikTok, but, you know. I mean, I think the whole Who world didn't? That was t- before I was out of Netflix. But I'm really grateful for Butternut. I, you know what? I've seen, I don't know, what is it, four or five episodes of... Uh, Secret Tiny Whispers, but I haven't watched one of Tiger King. So it's super true. This is a good time to wash out your sponge. That are you done? Almost. Did so you, what I want to say to you that? guys is because I know you guys will be so hard on yourselves. Is if you are not totally loving where you're at, mm-hmm. the trick is come back with a good load of black. Yeah. Oh. Just add a little. Add a little black. You know, I'm kind of loading the sponge. See the load here? Mm-hmm. And get the sponge loaded up. And that adds a, put little, in a surface little layer. Yeah, a little bit of black Distress. to the surface. Distress it. It's distressed. Tell it it is not loved and it was never a part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Distress it. Oh, my goodness. But so I when you said- get patterns like that, come in with your sponge and go on the other side and sort of tap them out. Because that's the thing is just trying to avoid. You want to create a sense of rust and distress without making too many patterns and play with it for a minute, Mm -hmm. you know, and then also believe in your rust. Sometimes it's so hard for you guys to believe in yourselves. You've got to believe in your rust. I think we're there. That's pretty good. This looks pretty good. It looks, I mean, it looks like the creepy door key in yeah. the intro does so it that's all you got to do i feel like it i feel like we got there i don't know it's just i can always go a little another layer oh, there's always uh, another layer i'm so like getting a little more of the uh kind of off yellow ochre layer kind of around here trying to make sure we've got good contrast is what we're looking for lights and darks you don't want them to be too similar whenever you get to the end of this step Right, you're gonna to want to wash your hands and put your sponge in water and rinse it out now because once the acrylic dries on the sponge, it kind of totally ruins it. Mm. Kind of like completely destroys it. All right, next step. Next step. So hopefully you didn't get lost in the rusty layers and you are here now, ready to create some dimensionality on this keyhole. This whole next step is about dimension kind of creating a 3D effect in the painting, and it's easier to do than you might think. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a bright, I think I'll grab a, oh, a number 10 bright. This is a brush for acrylic paint. It's about like an inch across. And I'm going to go ahead and put out some more black paint. More black paint. (laughs) I'm going to put out some more black paint. Now, if you don't have heavy-bodied acrylic, can you use craft paint? You, yeah, craft paint is real paint. You're not hallucinating it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, heavy-bodied acrylic does certain techniques easier, and that's something to think about. But, you know, the fun will be there no matter what. So What you doing there? I'm going to take a little bit of black paint. I'm loading it on the edge of my brush here. I'm flipping over both sides so it's got a nice load. I'm going to come and make a dark line on the inside of my keyhole. Actually, I'm going to switch to one of my number eight cat's tongues. You think so? Yeah, I want even more control. This is a number eight cat's tongue, uh, Art Sherpa brand. You can use whatever you want. I just want a little more control. Maybe like a round or something would be better. I'm going to come on the inside here, making sure that we've got just a little dimension hmm. for the key that could go into this lock. I, you know... It was really cool. The I, I actually have to say the the seeing the Steadicam group talk about 
the uh, how they did the shot mm-hmm. it was pretty interesting. I guess like before before that, I didn't really too much watch the show. <laughs> yeah, he only watches the show if the steady cram cam group like has something going on with it. That's why he watched Maisel. Right, that's what got me into it. And then when I heard the same team did the fly through shot with the keyhole and then over the building and the elephants and like, I was super impressed. Now, something to pay attention to is if you'll notice that the shading is thicker on the top and tapers to an edge here. So that's something you're going to want to do is make it just a little bit thicker at the top. Don't get too crazy with it. Wow. That just like... Turned it into a keyhole. Turns it into a keyhole. And then I'm going to come down the sides and do, again, a very thick opening at the bottom. Come down the side. Come down. I can't wait to see everybody's painting. I think you guys are going to do so good on this. And this is really something that anyone could do. Anyone can do this. You know, you download the mini book, you look at the step-by-step, you get the uh, traceable, and you are set. And then you just follow along with the video, and you're there. You can just paint right from home. You know, even if you don't watch the show, you can enjoy this painting. It's really simple to do. Yeah. And it's really a fun image. I was very attracted to, like, this image. So I've got a nice, thick, uh, dark base down here. And that makes that foreshortened keyhole. Yeah, and that's going to cover that a little bit. And then um, along the edges, we're going to definitely want to create kind of some highlighting. Mm -hmm. So I may get back into my sponge a little bit and see if I can get some controlled highlighting around the edges. What do you mean by that? So I'm going to pinch my sponge and I'm going to load it up with uh, maybe like a little off-white kind of brown-orange taupey. Right, definitely part of the patina, but, and I'm going to come here and see I'm pinching. Yeah. And make sure that I. Oh. And I create a little rounding. So just tapping up and down. See the pinch of the sponge? I do. So any tool you have, it could be your finger. You could just tap up and down with a brush. There you go. You want to just exaggerate those uh, moments. Now I'm going to turn the canvas. Yeah. And I do that so that I'm always working to what's easier for me and easier for my health. I'm going to pinch here. Come around. And you can come back with the black pretty easily to clean up any part of it you need to. Maybe a little more yellow. And I'm just making, you know, the roll. Little more white, little more highlight. So I'm painting like obviously, you know, there isn't a really there isn't a real keyhole here. It is the illusion of the keyhole. You're just adding a little rounding. And I'm being very light with this shading and this little highlight. As you can see. Oh, yeah. I don't want to draw, like, just a straight line because it's rust, right? I can blend it out here a little bit. Just creating that real awesome feel. How many more episodes of this are there? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if this is a 10 episode, eight episode series. I don't, I haven't gone to the website to look at, uh, what their, what their show schedule is because sometimes I get a little, dis- I get like a little despondent hmm. when I know that a show is going to come to a uh, close too soon. I'm going to take a little of my cad red and a little of my cad orange, a little brown. Um, I'm going to check. That's a little too much yellow red. When you get that, you just tap that three, just come back with brown and just make sure that you are. You know, You're just adding some more dimensionality to that. You just make sure it looks nice, right? Like this is going to go on your wall and you want to make it look nice. Mm-hmm. If you're going to bring it home and put it in your den, you know. 
You want to make sure that if your friends see it, they're like, oh, I love your panting. So these little touches of extra work can make a big difference. Oh, yeah. Right? And just when you're new to painting, you wouldn't necessarily know that that's what you needed. Back into that. And then you just come back with your round, your number eight cat's tongue, whatever brush you're using. Right? You just need a brush you can kind of make a turn with. That's what this whole brush is. Look, I can make a turn. That's all it is. I'm just making a turn. And I'm cleaning up a turn. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. Straightening a line for, for the shadow. You know, maybe here I might kind of curve it. See how I'm curving it? I do. That's it for this step, I think. I think we got there. It, it looks good. It looks yeah. like... The you nailed the, the creepy door keyhole. We have a keyhole looking into blueness. So that's a fantastic thing. You should know that in acrylic painting, there's always kind of like a crazy, ugly stage on your painting. This is it. <laughs> so if you're feeling like that, just know you're doing exactly the right thing and you're completely on track. Don't worry. You know, I think it's just really important to realize that um, we feel a lot of anxiety when we're painting. And so it's normal at this stage. To be a little worried that you're not doing everything ready. But remember, acrylic paintings are built up in layers and we're only halfway through. All you've got to do to like totally succeed at this is get it all the way to the end. You just got to go through the door, through the door, through the next door. <laughs> to the next the door where the door, secret, secret art is. Where the secret is. Through the door. <laughs> So we're going to be getting into the sky and the clouds. Now, I know clouds can be really frustrating for new artists, but I've got some couple trips and techniques here that are going to make it a lot easier for you. We're going to be using the sponge again. So it's a good time to have washed out your sponge of all the paint and gotten clean water. First, for the clouds, let's kind of fix this interior sky. I'm going to grab my big square brush that we used from earlier, and we're going to load it up with white and get a little blue. Okay, just some nice light blue. And let's come from the bottom. Nice, light, light blue. It's a lot lighter than what we originally had here. Oh, yeah. And we're going to paint this part in with the lighter color of the sky. You need to leave room for the clouds to be white. So that's an important thing. But we're going to use the sponge method which I have like all these paintings with uh, Q-tips and stuff where you can paint with Q-tips and sponges. Mm -hmm. And that's when we sort of developed this <laughs> method of doing it. But it's super easy and it's a lot of fun and it gets you a pretty good cloud and will look so good with her in the red dress and the balloons and everything. All right, so I want to just come across here and I'm just making sure it's nice. Now I'm being a little fussy, a little bit precious. Yeah. Um, just a bit. You don't have to be too much. You just want to make sure that this space is looks light. Like Before this dries, guys, dip your brush in water, and you're going to come up and darken the blue a bit, right? And we're going to blend it down into this. And this works if this paint is still wet. Now that's is, called wet into wet. That's right. We're going to be doing wet into wet, which means the paint down here is still wet, right? There you go. And you can see where it's still wet. I can kind of softly, not a lot of brush pressure, softly brush this down into there. And then this up here is a darker shade of blue. This is the phthalo blue again. right? And it is a darker shade of blue. Not dark, though. Uh, this, The part of this, like this, again, this is the part that reminds me so much of Pushing Daisies, where it's creepy but cheerful. As long as what Delgado doesn't have to keep screaming at people. <laughs> You have no room, man. So, okay, in this show, the detective, um, there's a scene where you think he shot, uh, and no spoilers, but he's not in. If you didn't see that episode, I'm super sorry. I don't like rage, comment below. But um, he didn't die from the gunshots. <laughs> but don't rage, comment because we spoiled it. It's not that big of a spoiler. He's just now deaf. Right. So he's like deaf. So he talks a little too loud in all the episodes. And I keep teasing John that he's Delgado because on Skype calls. He's so I loud. Project. I can't have him near me. He's like theater. I am the loudest Skype talker in the world. And I'm like, you're Detective Delgado is what you are. All right, let's just keep Frankie. painting. <laughs> oh, my God. 
gosh. So what we want here is a darker blue that kind of ombres. Did the fancy word with me, ombre. 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 That's pretty pretty slick. You just made a a a keyhole sky. Right, I imagine like that was a pretty high budget like <laughs> CG, and you just sort of like. I'll paint it. Now, before this is totally dry, I just like to do it when everything's a little wet. I'm going to take my sponge. You want to make sure it's damp. Let me explain on damp. So you don't want your sponge to be soaked. You want it to be damp, like where you're not squeezing out tons and tons of extra water. I'm going to load up mostly wet. It's okay if a little blue gets on it. And we're going to come here and let's kind of use our sponge. We're going to make little circular motions. I'm going to go up and down. Maybe over, create this sort of really fun sponge cloud. The key is See not how that does, and it blends it in to the bottom. And then I can switch over to the other side and like blend, soft blend it this way. Wow. So then I have that nice little cloud there. Come get in. I think we should have another little one coming here. I mean, we got to give the balloons and, a, and the birds some place to be. Now this is about patterns, right? Yeah, you don't want to make like little circular cotton balls. Yeah, no Your patterns. clouds should be unruly, <laughs> right? They should be a little bit off. And then I like to take them at the edge here and notice I kind of taper them out. Yeah. So that's a nice thing to do. I'll come over this other side and sort of blend. Coming into the yeah, keyhole here and then across here. And then right here, I'm going to want to bring, and if I have to come back with some black, I will. Because I do want the top of this cloud to be a little whiter. If you don't like your cloud at this point, what can you do about it? Just paint the whole thing over. Just paint the blue back yeah, in? Yeah, just paint the blue, like dry it all and paint the blue back in. That's the key, though. You have to yeah. dry it. But notice it's we're just, you know. And now a fun cloud that I like to do, and I do it with different brushes and stuff, but we're going to come up here and make some wispies. You ready? Mm -hmm. So my pressure is so light. Look at that, how light that pressure is. And I'll make those little different atmospherics, little spaces. So now we've got kind of some space that the birds could be flying up into. And that gives them some context. It gives the balloon some context. I have my feelings on what I think the balloons represent Yeah. in the show. Um, I have my theory. I've been uh, watching like uh, different deconstruction videos, as you know, I like to do. Where I'm like, oh, yeah. Explain the explain the difficult to understand oh my gosh if that had been there for twin peaks i would have been so much happier <laughs> what does that mean and who killed laura i don't know all right so we just want little tops of these and they kind of puff out and that's really all we want for the sky just kind of a clear day with a little bit you know you can always bring stuff here and there but she's going to be really taking up this space so it's probably better to just rinse out and go with a less is more now, just talking about clouds here, notice that it builds up. It comes up in little puffs. These circles are kind of like controlled. And then we just feather, strip on our canvas, feather blend at the end here underneath. Kind of create that nice yeah. shading into it. So that's the goal. I, and I you like know what? That. If you just really like, I don't want to do clouds, you could just do the ombre sky. You know what I actually like about this, though? Mm. You perfectly captured the little wisps <laughs> that like that are in the video. I can't it's believe that. Super like, fun. So, a very important thing to keep in mind for this next step, which is transferring the image onto the canvas, is that you want the paint to be dry. So I do dry uh, between steps often, or if I need you to be wet, I'll tell you that it's wet. But this one, you really want it to have it dry. Now, I printed out the traceable, the transfer of the image, which is line drying. And I'm going to line it up and tape it down with a low tack tape. Um, something beginners ask me a lot, which is, is tracing cheating. But if it is all of the Renaissance masters cheated because they all use something called a cartoon, mm -hmm. which is a transfer process. So it's important to remember that this is an art technique, not a cheating technique. Right. You still have to paint the girl in, right? Whether, you, whether you're painting this because you like know this is Lisa and you're super excited or you're painting this because you just love this girl and she just spoke to you and you feel like she belongs on your wall. What are you doing there with that stuff? Now, this is called Cero Paper, and I love it so much. Um, you can rub 
graphite pencil on the back of the paper. You can rub chalk on the back of the paper. I have a whole video on how to trace and transfer on a canvas. But my favorite is Cyril, and I like yellow because it doesn't um, stain the paint. Once I position her where I want her, I will kind of come in and put my Cyril paper down, right? And really, I just have to have it everywhere the lines are going to go. That's okay. So just over make sure she's where you want her. Because when she's there, she's there. No, actually, you can uh, erase the lines with water. So <laughs> you're not that stuck, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to tape everything down. That's a big thing when you're new to painting that you don't know. You have to uh, tape the traceable down. Because if it wiggles, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't the work paper, at all. Yeah, it, you, you, wanna, you want all your lines to stay put. All right. So all we have to do is worry about her contour lines. And I'll take a colored pencil. And I'm going to press pretty hard on this so that we get the yellow. If you see this here, if I go like this, see how the yellow came off oh, and went onto oh. the canvas. That's oh, what yeah. we're trying to get. Now, again, you can do a rubbing on the back and use that method. You could use projection. You could freehand it if you're confident in that. There's nothing wrong with freehanding. It's just okay to use a transfer method when you're new to painting and you're learning how to do it. And all we're doing is just making sure the major lines of her are on this. You can totally, like, see the whole ballet reference here. Oh, yeah. I think. She clearly has like that uh, ballet feel. And you guys know how I just love a girl from behind. Like so crazy about that. So bun head up there. Woo, the bun. And this is really easy for a beginner to paint too. So this you is a figure. If you've been wanting to paint a girl and having a beautiful girl on your wall, this would be a very good one to have. Very easy to paint. Oh, so I just want to check and make sure that all my lines are where I need them. She's actually pretty simple in construction. So that's all I've got to get. And then I've got her peeking in and out, right? That makes it easier to... Yeah, exactly. That's going to make it easier to do. I'm going to put this... By the way, if you do decide to invest in serial paper, you can use that sheet of paper again, again, and again, and again, and again. So if you like painting and you want to do it more than one time which I would highly recommend, right? That's a good way of doing that. I'm also going to come here. I'm going to take a white pencil and while I've got her in, I'm going to place my balloons in. I have a whole theory on what I think the balloons mean. Yeah, you were talking about that. I think the balloons are the twins, right? And her want to have children and everything that's going on with them and her, her identity as a mother. You know, in, in, into this situation where her her children are accused of something so terrible. And then, you know, she finds like perhaps betrayal at home. Uh, there's like been so many twists and turns, you know, the whole thing like kicks right off with the murder and then boom, we're in it. So yep. I think the two balloons represent the boys. Mm. <laughs> I do. In my opinion. But uh, I'm waiting to see. Like, they don't do that after talk. You know how some of the shows do an after talk show that tell yeah. you what they were thinking? They don't do that. So you got to guess. All right. That's it. That's the step. I put in two balloons. I put one here and here. It's kind of like a little teardrop shape. And I used, you could use chalk. You could use a watercolor pencil. You just want something that you can remove with water and a soft brush. We're going to call this a step. When we come back, we're going to paint her in. It's going to go pretty fast from here. So we have our line drawing on our surface now. We're going to start blocking in. And if you guys remember from the beginning of the painting what that is, that means kind of roughly painting in objects. So we're going to start blocking in those objects. I'm going to take a number four round. This is just a good round brush that I have control over. Get it wet in my water. And I'm going to take a little of my Cad Red and my Titanium White. Now I'm going to do, this is fair. So I'm going to do this character uh, with fair skin. But, you know, if you're like, man, I like want to paint somebody in my family or yourself and you want to do this differently, feel free to change up because this is your painting. You have several videos on skin tones. I do. So that's. I you do. Could, you could end hairstyles, too. And hairstyles and everything. So. You know, right down to like if you want to go full avatar. So if if this anything in here that you want to change, you can change that. That is okay. And I don't mind that ever. I feel like people should 
have art on their walls that makes them feel great. And I'm always all for that. Yeah, Ooh, I'm just painting this messy because remember, we're blocking in. So this is just the titanium white and a little of the cad red. It would be just like STW to switch out an actress mid, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, oh, we're just going to put a di different actress in here and that'll be Lise. Yeah, that would be crazy. But, you know, again, every, you know, it's your lease, right? Our own inner lease. So I guess maybe this is my inner lease. Huh. That's one way of looking at it. But, you know. You, but so it's a reflection. But um, you know, I guess that's kind of the metaphor of the whole intro, kind of. I think so. The For me, it was. behind the door, behind the, the secret. Stop the, mocking it. <laughs> you know, that's why. Whatever. Ooh, he mocks Frankie. everything. <laughs> he mocks everything I watch. That was like just a few times. I don't think it's that bad. And honestly, I feel like it adds. Every time he discovers something new, it's like he finds loose change in his pockets. Cranky! It's like. Not that bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, you mock everything. Uh, well, so I'm just I, painting this in smoothly. Yeah. For sure, you're going to need whatever you decide to do here. You're going to need a couple coats on her. Then um, her gloves and her arms are on black. I like to actually take a little black and blue when I'm doing black. Because I think it does some neat. Now, because she's facing away and her hands are kind of down a little bit, this is a little easier to do. Yeah, that I do love because whenever you don't make beginners have to do um, arms or, you know, you, they can do an arm. But, you know, hands kind of like really throw them. And it kind of put these gloves up here. And then you can get one eye down, but not two. <laughs> well, I have a video on how to do the second eye, but. <laughs> but there's always, there's that phase though, where you struggle and you're like, I got the one eye perfect, but the other one's kind of like, and then you struggle to get the other one perfect. And the other eye goes weird. Kind of like the way the twin, the one twin has the funky eye. Well, again, you know, it's not like I'm sending home, like, I'm not reporting to your families what the painting is supposed to look like. This is art and it's subjective and nobody has a right to judge your painting. Mm -hmm. So I, look, if you've got that relative, you send them to me, I'll back you up. I'll be like, yes, exactly like that. Totally perfect. You know, however you want to do it. So you're just painting the gloves in. I'm just going to paint the gloves in with the black. Right. And again, they'll have a couple coats. We're just getting that first layer on. The underpainting, right? So it's the black. So we've got cad red and white for the skin, black and blue for the gloves, black and blue for the hair. I'm not going to do any of the little tendrils or flowers or anything yet. This is early days, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, I, I've been doing girls that walk away or face away for a long time, like a long time on the channel. And what I'll say is whenever you have the figure face away from the viewer, mm -hmm. then in some sense, the viewer can be the figure or be more participant in the painting. That's true. So I'll come down on the neck a little bit. You know how the, sometimes you'll have that little point down, just a nice little touch you can do. The bun won't feel like a bun till we add the highlights. This is just one of those weird art tricks that when you do it, you're like, what? <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh, no, it's so crazy, but it works like that. Let's put in her red. Now, to get the first layer of red for her dress, I'm actually going to take a little black and our red together and make a darker color so that we can come back with some highlights. Mm. See how it's almost like a brick? Color. Oh, yeah. This is really going to help. Get a nice bus line. Now, this was the... we. I, I keep falling asleep. Have we ever actually seen her in this dress? Not yet. Huh. This just in this week. So I don't know if it's like one of those like dreamy sequences that they have or if it relates to what's coming. Ah. But not yet. So. I have to wonder if like this is like some of the foreshadowing foreshadowing for something coming. Well, again, I keep referencing Twin Pinks for this because I feel like there's some real similar Twin Peaks. Yeah, kind of feel to it. You know how Twin Peaks was and and the clothes and costumes and imagery there. So you, you, I think with stuff like this where 
artists are involved because everybody here, in my opinion, the people that write it, the people that do the sets, the people that are acting it, they're artists. Okay. The, the writing has been off the chart. Now, I, I mean, you know me, I heckle DC all the time, but the Constantly. writing. Constantly. This Even been, the Snyder cut didn't get a lot of love from John. No, but I mean, <laughs> this was, this has been phenomenal writing and really good cinematography, but the sets are like 1960s, 70s Star Trek. Like what is with that? I don't really know, but I am obsessed with that one double, yeah. uh, what is it? Double. It's where it's got the two, uh, shears on it on the. From like mid-century modern almost. Yeah. Right? That double shaded lamp where it's all stitched and it's it's crazy I like don't... shape. I it's want that lamp the, now. I'm obsessed with it. I went on eBay and looked. What? The one next to the sofa? Yeah. Okay. I went on eBay to look to see if I could find anything like it. But anything in that era at that quality and condition is as actually, and I think that's how they make them seem as affluent as they do. Is that the one that Delgado nearly broke? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a really cool lamp. Yeah, I was like, do anything you want, but don't break the lamp. I almost painted the lamp. But then I realized that's probably obscure and only I care. Yeah. Well, about you know, the lamp. We like rain lamps. Huh? We like rain lamps. We like rain lamps. We like a lot of that stuff. But I do love that. Everyone's been doing that sort of 1980s feel lately in uh, all the shows. And then acting like kids don't have cell phones, which I'm not really into. But this. That 1970s feel? I don't know. It's sort of... Uh, con- 1970s, uh, that mid-century modern. Yeah, I, I feel like it's more like a, a desperate, empty 40s. <laughs> no, I think it's more in the... It, I definitely think it's Tri-5. Yeah. I do. Well, I feel I mean, like the, that lamp, that chair, the lines, the colors, you know, the elegant space. And again, I'm so obsessed with the painting in her bedroom, I can hardly stand it. Now, the frame on that still drives me crazy why does the frame drive you crazy keep taking a little black over to your red and we're gonna do the balloons now why does the frame drive you crazy that's a okay. beautiful frame i think we're gonna find out that there that some of the messages are on the back of that painting on the frame you think yeah i think that's what they're gonna uncover in the next episode so if you don't it. know what we're talking about you'll have to catch up and like let us know in the comments below or what you think no what's spoilers. your theory no spoilers no I, like if you're gonna do spoilers, do that thing where you go spoilers and you go da 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 and oh, tell yeah. us your theory of what it is in the comments. That would if be good. you know. If you know, if you have a good idea. You know. Just be spoilers considerate. Though of course we can't say anything after what we did for Game of Thrones. Oh my gosh. I People were so, so mad at us. They like they <laughs> never again. That's the reason why I didn't use any of the scenes from this. Uh, yeah this one is because last time when we used the game of thrones everybody was like so mad that we like ruined the whole intro because they were like i haven't seen the episode and you just blew everything for me and and, and even though we're all kind of caught up with each other because it's you know covid reality kind of world well not where we're all has... catching up on shows it's still like people there's a lot of people who are working and not and everybody has butternut yet and not it, it is not out everywhere i guess it's ui is uh I read on Vulture that its UI was uh, really challenging and they had some sort of surfacing problem. And I don't know that it's available everywhere. I did see uh, an ad. Butternut, butternut, forget it. <laughs> no, no. I saw I saw uh, the new <laughs> ad on the bus. Yeah? It said uh, to squash the competition. I was like, oh, man. That's oh. Been, uh, it was, it's they have super the worst bad. ads. Like, we're out here. Uh, we're in uh, Pennsylvania now. And uh, so we get that kind of like, I, th- I think we have to switch to Casey Neistat, don't we? Because well, like, it's, I think local that they, for us now. I think they only piloted it in New York. Oh, really? Which is, yeah. So I think you have to be in like the north area, which we sort of lucked oh, into. Man, that is a bummer because there's some other good shows on there. In fact, um, if you have another good show you want to recommend... Uh, again, you know, uh, put it in the comments uh, from Butternut. If, you ha- if you're watching Butternut and you have another good show you'd like to recommend, put it in the comments uh, and tell us why without, like, spoilers or if you're going to do spoilers. Like, is this a spoilers, step? Like, this is a step. Sorry. This is a step. This is a step. But just tell us. Give me show recommendations. I always love to do that. So you've done the underpainting of the girl. Don't you feel good about yourself?
So onward with our painting. Now, in art, in acrylic painting, this is about when everything comes together. So uh, if it's been feeling kind of challenging or awkward, that's super normal. Remember to use those extra resources. Check that description below. All of that is free, right? It's like you can absolutely take advantage of that anytime. Um, on her, right, as we go forward, we're going to be painting more layers, kind of building this up, riching up. And you're going to see this whole piece come together really fast. So I consider this the downhill track, right? Like if, so if this is Art Mountain and we're going up it, this is the downhill side of it. I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to go ahead and get a second layer on her skin, which is just, I'm just using the CAD red and white and just creating a little bit of a peach. It's okay if some yellow gets into it, that's fine. You just want to do a very, very light value and I'm going to make sure that she's got nice coverage. Now, if you're painting student paints or craft paints, you may find that you have to do an extra coat beyond what I have to do. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You're fine. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you're still a very good artist. Paint different different paints have different uh coverage. Yeah, totally. And we have folks from all over the world painting with us and sometimes paint doesn't have as much pigment. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because washes and glazes are a good thing. Yeah. So never, ever feel weird about that. And again, if you're from like, if you're one of our, one of, one of our many, many fans uh, around the world, because I guess we're like in 250 countries. So if you're from somewhere else and you don't have these mediums or materials, don't worry. You just use what you have. Um, so right here. Hold on. So now this whole cast is the the entire cast from Australia. Uh, it feels like on Butternut that a lot of the actors are like the shows take place in America, but the actors are not American. Think Supernatural, mm. right? From Canada, kind of a similar deal. Another great show. It got underappreciated in its time. You think I don't know that? <laughs> you do him really good. Even though you sleep through everything, you do him really good. Just now, right here, I want to create a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to take a little bit of the skin color that I have and mix it into my brown. And just come here. And kind of like under the arm. We're going to come in with some more lines, but it's just a nice thing that you can do. A little bit of a shadow. And then sometimes I will put a little bit coming up the back. But only if it's like a close shade. It's just a thing that you can have going on. Rinse out. Come in and get a little of the black. A little bit. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of that line there. See how I did that? And kind of mm. creates that space. I'm going to paint in her opera gloves. I don't feel like there's enough actual opera gloves in real life. Ah. Make sure it has enough coats to make them opaque. Yeah, you really got to come in and make sure you've got enough coats to make everything opaque. And then also remember, your painting up close will look streakier than mine will look on camera. Mm -hmm. Because there is, you know, uh, a camera, weirdly, is nicer to art. <laughs> so... That just happens. a strange side effect of art on film. There you go. So that's looking really good. And we're getting the skin there and everything. Let's come up to her hair. Kind of get that second layer. Again, I'm just using Mars black and blue. There we go. Doing so good. Brushing that down. I like to brush in the direction of her head. And then I'm going to paint the bun in. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to go into my blue and my uh, black and white. Mm -hmm. Actually, I want to be more blue. More blue. Because this is layer one. So in the center, she has like, if you put a little dot, and let's see if I can get you guys to see that. This is the hard one to see initially. 
There we go. I did a little black oh, and gray. Yeah, We're just going it. to start to curve these little strokes, and that speaks about the roll of the hair. When we come in, we can go a little bit lighter, and then we're going to do some now reflections you... that will make this really feel like a bun, and then we put the flowers in. So it's just about starting that there and knowing that it's there. Those little bits of blue are what add the dimensionality. I like it. It's you know, it's not something you may notice. It's it's a little bit of a fussy step, but I like it. So the center of the donut bun needs to be dark, and then you've got a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to go ahead and take a little black. And this is very light pressure and make some flyaways. Little flyaway oh, yeah. bits of hair in what is called an S curve stroke. Right? Sometimes that can be frustrating for new artists getting that S curve, but those little curves to the stroke help it feel like hair. And I feel like the fact that she's got flyaways really helped define that bun. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to come in and I th actually, you know what? Let's let this be a step. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll do the red. Sounds good. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. So at this stage, we want to pop some of these reds and really fill that out. And I'm going to want to alternate between my round and this cat's tongue, which remember is just a pointed filbert and you could use a larger round or bright. It wouldn't be super important. I'm going to come up and add a little more black to my red over here and make sure. Oh, you're doing a pair of the. I'm yeah, the I'm going to go to the balloons at first. Oh, wow. That's just dimensionality. Yeah, we're going to give them some dimensionality. We're going to add a little shadow right there across that belly of the balloon. Think up, squirrel. <laughs> and I'm going to put that same kind of just a little bit. Right here, creating some dimensionality in the balloons. I'm going to rinse Twin out. Balloons. I'm going to come into my red here. Oh. And pop in some of that bright, bright red. And when we add the highlights, it's going to be like pop, but hopefully they won't pop. I think if they pop, like at any point, I've been waiting for them to like pop the balloon. <laughs> like the, in the scene, like something is like her dreams have popped or. Well, the, they've subtly changed little things on the intro every time. Like the Simpsons. <laughs> Do you really have to pay attention? Like if you, if you like those like deep stuff, like if you were like, I follow everything Titanic Sinclair does and the poppy thing and. Is it real? Is it augmented reality? If you like love that, then you will totally love the intro part of it. I used to really love seeing the things change on The Simpsons. It used to really make me super happy. Not that they did any of that <laughs> to make me happy. Maybe they did. Huh. I think the, our, the, uh, Matt Groening did it just because he wanted to. I'm going to brush over the top with my bright red. And you can see that the two reds work together quite well. And I, I think for me, I'm going to do a cute little trick, Okay. which is I'm going to take some low tack tape. It's painter's tape. Yeah. And I'm going to do this so I can be a little expressive with my brush stroke. But remember, you guys can just be careful. <laughs> or you can go back and repaint the black, right? Or you can go back and repaint the black. But I'm going to do this just to show you guys this trick. And again, remember on, I know this tape is pricey, but remember on this tape, you can use it again more than one time. I think it's something people kind of forget is that you can use it again more than one time. And then come here and kind of flick this around in arc circles. Notice that when I'm going on my brush stroke towards the left, it kind of curves up towards the left-hand side. I like that very much. I can come in and get a little of my yellow into my red. A couple places. Just to make it feel, you know, more. So 
a little more. Okay. So rinse it out. And while that's having a dry, right? It's having a dry and I think about what it's done. Because sometimes your painting has to do that, have a think about what it's done. I'm going to kind of treat myself to some fluid paint. Ah, I've got enough white. I don't need to get my fluid out. I've got so much white. I'm going to get a little detail brush. See this brush here? It's an art sharp on number one, but it's just a detail. You can use whatever you have. You just want something that gives you control. I'm going to get a little bit of white hair and we're going to come put some reflections on the bun. Notice the curve of the strokes. That's kind of like the shine on the hair. See, it looks mm -hmm. like the bun is shiny. The bun is so shiny. No more content ID. <laughs> I never sing well enough to get content ID. That's never going to happen. I'm going to take a little bit of my red on my detail brush, and I'm going to do little touches. Oh, yeah. These are like little flowers, and I'm taking the red and black. So the first layer of flowers is maybe... Perhaps a little darker, and that is so that I can curve them around her bun. Come back and highlight them. The other kind of fun thing that you can do is you can bring a little line coming off, and you can go in front oh, of the yeah. keyhole. Ah, oh, artists, they do crazy things. I kind of like how her hair ribbon just drugs through the keyhole in the entryway anyway. Yeah. So it kind of ties in these little these little elements. Whenever you do fan art, remember that, you know, it's important to recognize that there's artists and creatives involved in the production of the original. And so you're doing it for yourself, for your personal enjoyment, mm -hmm. right? And that's important to keep in mind. That's sort of courtesy among artists. Now that this is a little bit dry, I'm going to go ahead and get my white again. And we're going to come here. I like to do my balloons almost like in a little tap of light. And then I'll stand back and kind of kind of look at them. Let's see how that is. Stand back and give that a look. Oh, they look like they're really oh, yeah. like flying, right? I feel they like the they could use another layer of red, though. Think so? Yeah, just a bit. I mean, it's starting to look like, you know, like you took this as a screenshot. <laughs> I certainly took a lot of inspiration. I'll own it. I mean, I'm just. This looks a, remarkably close to the intro. <laughs> okay. I'll own it. All right. I gave credit. No, it's Great. good. I like Fair it. Use. It, it looks so, good. I would take a little of my yellow and green on the tip of my brush here. A little bit. I need it more green. Sometimes I do this where I like, go to touch the canvas and then come back and then go to touch the canvas. John has like one video where I think <laughs> he's like, he's, like times. 12 times that I didn't touch the canvas. She just went for paint. Like early days of YouTube and early think days. About it and then. Well, you know, sometimes you kind of like have to work your way into it. We all do. I might get a little more green. I think I put out way more green paint than I needed for this moment. I got like super excited about the green. I'm like, all oh, the green paint. Now, we have to wonder. I wonder if the balloons will change in the upcoming episodes as they start to reveal more about the twins. I, again, I'm watching them because I feel like things are kind of moving in that direction. Anything. Like, so I want to put a little highlight here. Of just pure red on these. Just load it up on the tip of your little detail brush. And it's just like a little touch pool. See how it just implies the flowers? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Her hair is just so pretty and gorgeous, and it's just wonderful. And then we're going to go ahead and add some 
bright red shading to the ribbon. I'm going to step back and kind of see how that is looking. Now, we've got a lot of little birds to do, so I may want to put the birds in their own stump mm, because there's yeah, so many true. birds. And the string. And the strings. But the birds were a little bit Hitchcocky, so we'll have to decide if we want to follow that example or kind of tone it down a bit. Yeah, there was a lot of birds. Yeah, I don't, need I don't think birds. you need to do all of them. It's like some of the birds. Some birds <laughs> light. You decide. How many? If, how many birds you want to put in. I will put in some birds so you can paint birds. And then you can decide how many birds or balloons or whatever you want to do because it's your painting. Okay, let's call the step. Next step. Next step. So we're back on the final step. We're sort of in the home stretch. So we're going to be doing the birds and the strings and stuff like that. I'm really excited to add these because I feel like I, I feel like I've seen a lot of birds in the show. Like birds have almost on a Hitchcock level have been represented in the show and the birds have really been pulling me in. I'm a little bird obsessed. So I'm glad I get to add these up here. You know, I think the stuff we, okay. So like I'm going to show you the strings and then I'm going to show you a bird and then there's going to be a lot of spoilers. So if you don't want the spoilers, you might want to mute me or something. And just so watch after, me right. right. But first I have to show you this and then I'll, and then I'll spoil. Okay. Cause I've learned my lesson. We're going to do little kind of back and forth. You just want the, the string to kind of feel like it's been caught by the wind, that it's just being blown by the forces in all of their lives, these unknown moments, these impossible okay. things. Now, if you make a mistake. Oh, I made a little boo-boo there. What happens if, you, if that happens to you? So I'm going to take my towel a little bit wet, and I'm going to just tap that away. See, and I could do that because the paint oh, underneath just, was dry. And that's nothing to worry about. That little bit no. of discoloration will go away, won't it? Yeah. The, the paint will dry and it will go back to its regular color. That's no big deal. So we're going to put in some birds. And then once I get some birds in, so you guys see how birds are done, then we're going to get into it. Because we, I, I have been so good to not geek out, but now I want to geek out. I, now, I know that later in the scene, it turns into the death flock of birds. But just put the couple in like when they first look through the hole. <laughs> Because after they go through and they open up into the scene, that's just crazy. It It is. And I did kind of look it up on PETA to make sure, like, that what? no animals were mistreated in the scene. Because that was you know, a I lot. wouldn't recommend to show to you guys where I felt like animals were, like, abused to create the imagery. I was going to say, there was a lot of elephants in that. Because the, the steady cam shot, they showed how many elephants they used. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and I and again, they everybody said that it was a responsible use of elephants. So I'm gonna have to trust that. Though I have to wonder if you can responsibly use elephants in a, in a scene. It may have been CG. I, so we've you got know, this little bird here, and you can kind of see its bird shape. I'll give you another little bird that you could do, and then and then we're gonna like get into it. So you know, after this bird, though, I'm gonna go in because the thing about the twins, it brought me back to Orphan Black. And that's oh, kind yeah. of where I'm I'm wondering if this is an homage to Orphan Black. I feel like there's a lot of homages. Could be. Like the that the creators of the show are fans the way we're fans of things. And so they're wanting to come in and so I mean like the one critical review I saw, they were pretty hard on them. They were like, it's let fans down. But I never agree with the critics. I don't. And I think it's, I'm, I'm well, here like, and I think they're going to pull it together towards the end. So you can see we got bird wing up, bird wing down. All right. We're going to get into like, it. You like DC, so we can't really. Oh, stop. This is better than the DC flicks though. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will give it that. <laughs> he actually likes it. Okay. Spoilers now. So we're going to paint in a bunch of birds. If you need to mute me, I am not offended. So the thing when they revealed that her, so she's got these identical twin boys. Right. And, you know, it's it's all very weird. Like her husband is very weird from the from when the show opened and there was the murder um, of the dentist. And he clearly had had Novocaine and was all kind of drooling. And actually, I was really impressed with the, how the actor handled that because I hadn't ever really examined what Novocaine was like huh. or how you would express Novocaine in an acting moment until he did this. That was a re I mean, that that is a 
uh, an award-winning performance that, with the whole way that he did the mouth thing and the little bit of drool. I was pretty yeah, impressed. Yeah, but, but acted like he was keeping it together. It, that, yeah. That tripped me out. But, like, he, like it was just normal. But, but the way that he's kind of gone from being an ally in the series to, you know, maybe he's got that whole relationship uh, with the detective from high school and, you know, her. When they came back with, so there's this whole weird moment where the detective is like saying, it's for twins. And they're like, how could it be the twins? And I've always seen them. And the husband goes through this whole weird explanation of, of how the twins would fool you, like like a really dark sort of like identical cousins moment like kathy duke gone dark kind of scenario and then um you know they do the dna test and it comes back that one of the twins is not hers and her whole reaction to that and like my heart like broke with her that's crazy it's like you know it's like two balloons but separated (laughs) right so you have to wonder was it are we going to find out that they did fertility treatments huh that's Um, interesting you know, is it going to be an orphan black situation? Like, what is happening? Genetic modifications. Like, one of them's half da- dinosaur. <laughs> Stop being a goof. <laughs> it could. They could You're do a crossover a with. Goof. They could do a crossover with DC, and it could be Aqua Bro. Could be. Could be Lisa's secret love affair. So this is why I don't encourage John to stay up with me when I'm watching the show, but he is pretty good about it. Um. He only likes the shots, the sceneries, and the sets, and then he checks out. But I am sort of interested now now that the kids are in, you know, well, her son is in jail, and her her husband and the cop may be colluding. Like, you have to wonder, where is it going to go? Like, I, I am looking forward to seeing how they wrap up the season finale, and if... Um, if it's going to go, like, lost, or if they're going to be able to pull it out. So, you know, and that you got to catch up. Um, I don't think I've told you anything uh, too, too new. You know, that isn't out there in most of the conspiracy theories that are online right now. But. And again, I I warned you to mute. So if you didn't mute. (laughs) Yeah, because clearly I'm not explaining the birds. (laughs) But they're looking really good, aren't they? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I I love these. I kind of like the two here. Until like the billion come, this was really cool. Until like that big swarm, yeah. Yeah, I think that has to be CG. To be really honest, I think some of the animal work has to be CG because there's no reports. And that was a lot of animals. Yeah, and in and in that really sort of weird menagerie way, where you're like, "What is up with this?" All right, we're going to do his little friend, and, and his little wing's going to go a little bit more forward. His little body coming back. So it's like a version of the M birds, but just better. You know, sometimes you gotta you got to have your little M birds. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure we have one kind of coming in the keyhole and out of the keyhole. So I'm I'm hoping that... It's going to wrap up in a good way. Um, if this does well, if there, I don't know how many other people are watching because it's such a Butternut is such a weird network, has such a weird pricing. They're gonna squash structure. the competition. Huh? They're gonna squash the competition. You know what I heard? Huh. I fully heard that um, it is owned by a couple disruptive tech guys from San Francisco, huh. and it is their hope to like take out like Netflix and um, Amazon and some of these other big cables. It would be cool. And create really like unexpected uh, programming that's more fan based and is the kind of thing where you, you, that it's more about the art than the sponsors and you're up at night thinking about it. How do you love this? Is this looking good? Yeah. It looks, this is fantastic. This is just, I feel like we captured it again. You're going to sign it. I'm going to sign it. You can go more birds. I don't birds. want to tell you how many birds. Your birds are your birds. I'm not in charge of your birds. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to sign in block right here. While you're doing that, you know one of the things I did like about Butternut is mm. the um, the menu where you get to see all of the show schedule. It's like the old school uh, cable television one. It just scrolls yeah. up, which is yeah. a lot nicer. Once I got it, it was hard to get on. the. T- it was hard to find. It was hard to get on the TV. But once I got it on the TV... 
I've been pretty happy. I like that little menu thing, though. You know. Oh, we did it. So. That's it. Congratulations to you. If you are here, you Can are you like an art champion. Yeah, definitely share. Check the hashtags below. Use the hashtag so I can find you and give you some love. Remember, you can share these paintings in my group on Facebook, the Art Trip Official, and we will totally be supportive. It's a great place to share your very first painting. I hope you enjoyed the free resources and that they helped you have a more successful and enjoyable painting experience just overall. If this does really well, and, and, and there's more fans than we expect. There's a lot more fans, I think, than what we were. We'll find out, right? Because, like, Stranger Things certainly had a fan base that we didn't expect. We can do another one of these. It, you tell me, if we were to do another one, if we hit, like, I don't know, a thousand comments or something of suggestions, you tell me what, you, what other scene you would want to do. And if it does well, then we will absolutely do another scene based on your suggestions, the most thumbed up one. We'll get it if that yeah. does that seem like it works. That seems That's like very good way to do it. We'll, just, we'll, we'll just have to go in there and check it out. But we'll Let's listen check to you guys. it out. Yeah. But in the end of the day, whatever you're watching, whatever you're doing, remember to be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye bye.